guys, Rosie with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be a Q&A video. I asked for questions um, and you guys answered. Well, you guys asked. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be doing this Q&A um, just to kind of answer some questions that my followers had for me. Um, this could be a lengthy video. So if it is a lengthy video, I advise that you guys get a snack, get something to drink. I have a water somewhere around here. <laughs> get something to drink and get comfortable and let's do this. Okay, so number one, what is the meaning behind the cackling moon? So what's the meaning behind my name, the tarot name, the cackling moon? Um... So, when I first started my tarot journey, which was in 2012, I was actually going by a different name. Um, I was going by Luna Hour, and that was actually the name of my YouTube channel. Everything was Luna Hour, even my email and all of that. I had a little website that I was, you know, putting my services in. I had an Etsy shop, all of that. And online drama happened, so I would say in 20 like 2013, 2014-ish, um, Luna Hour was going strong. I had like 7,000 followers on Tumblr. And then there was a lot of drama on Tumblr. And it was petty drama. And there was just like all this bullshit happening. And there was certain people that were just kind of trying to... I feel like they were trying to ruin reputations of certain readers. I think it, it, it stemmed from a lot of jealousy. And I think it was just a lot of pettiness and then you mix that with like online trolls and then you have like your recipe for <laughs> disaster. Um, so I was online bullied, basically. I was cyber bullied and it got to the point where it was getting personal and I didn't feel comfortable with it. So I kind of did a fight or flight type of thing and I flew. I At that time, I really wasn't like Luna Hour was starting to evolve into a professional business, but it was still in the baby stages. Um, I was doing a lot of free readings and doing just a lot of like socializing on social networks. So it wasn't to the point where it was like a job, you know what I mean? So I flew, I, I deleted everything. And that's, I think that's my Gemini rising tendencies where um, I'm like one way or the other. <laughs> like one polar polarity to the other, to the other end. There's like no comfort, you know, um, I'm hot or cold. And, um, and I deleted all my shit, right? I pretty much walked away from 7,000 followers on Tumblr. It just, it was so toxic. And then I took about a month off and this was like in the summer. I want to say it was 2013, but I could be wrong. So anyways, I took a month away. I was crying. I was sad. I was upset. And at the time I was talking to um, a fellow reader in the community and this person was kind of, you know, giving me the pep talk that I needed and they were just there for me and, and telling me, you know, don't give up, don't give up and this and that. So this person helped me pretty much evolve into the next phase of my journey. And I told this person, I want to start again but I don't wanna go with the same name, Luna Hour. I just felt like it was toxic. It was just like, they painted this toxic reputation for me. Mm. So I was like, I need to come up with a new name. And I started putting like, when I come up with screen names and stuff, like I would just put two and two together. You know, I would write a list of words that I really like. I knew I wanted moon in my name. And I was, you know, like thinking up different, different things like spirit moon, witchy moon, intuitive moon, something moon. <laughs> and, um, and then I was like thinking of things like how could it relate to me? And one of the things growing up, um, all of my friends in school would always tell me that I could cackle. Like I had a cackle. My laugh was, I had a very specific laugh. And they would always tell me like a cackling, you know, you, you would cackle. And my husband would even tell me that, um, that I, you know, could cackle like a little witch. <laughs> and so I put it together and I was like cackling moon, the cackling moon. And I just liked the way it sounded. It sounded so cute and it just, 
it just was different, you know? It was one of those things where you would hear it and you would be like, what's that, you know? <laughs> and I just felt like it kind of represented me in a way. So that's where Cackling Moon came from. Um, since Cackling Moon has been a thing, I've thought about, you know, going just strictly my name. Um, but I just, I don't know, I like the idea of the Cackling Moon. I, I don't know if I'll ever get tired of it, but that's what happened. <laughs> So I turned a very negative situation, the cyberbullying and stuff, to a positive, and Cackling Moon was literally created. So it's cool. Okay, next question. Um, let me put a little check mark that I answered it. <laughs> um, when I was first reading for others, what was my feeling after? So I started free readings for people on Tumblr in 2012, like 2012, 2013-ish. Okay, um, that's how I started to practice. And I remember, you know, I would put it on Tumblr, I would say, send me a question and I'll answer it. So I would answer and I would give them, you know, their two, three, four sentence reading. And then sometimes I would get feedback. So getting positive feedback helped me feel great about my choice to read for people. Um, I was very nervous. I was always worried about being wrong. Um, but then you have to realize when you are reading intuitively, what is wrong really mean, right? You're not there to read their minds. You are there to read their energy. Um, so there's really like no way to get it wrong um, unless you're completely like pulling it out of your ass and not, you know, being genuine. <laughs> but other than that, it's like if you're too, like seriously connecting with their vibe, um, it's just that's how a reading is. Um, so I would have to say reading for people online, a very different experience versus reading for people in person. I remember when I first started to read for people in person, um, I was reading in a tarot shop. I was super nervous. I was super nervous because again, it was like, am I going to say the right things? What are they going to, what are they going to say? I remember I had one lady I was reading for in person and she just had this look of disappointment on her face. <laughs> Um, so I just would try to not focus on those things, body language, all of that. Um, but I guess it's like when I first started to read for people, I was very nervous. I was always afraid of being wrong. I was always afraid of misinterpreting the cards. And it was finally when I realized like, you don't have to read the cards textbook, right? You can read them intuitively. And once I got that through my head, it was easier to wrap my mind around it. So yeah, <laughs> when I was first reading, I was very nervous. I was always nervous of being wrong. Have I tried using crystals as wards? Yes, I have. Um, and I actually do. So let me see if I can move this. So there on the floor next to the door, you'll see like the purple cat toy. Um, next to the door is a plate. It's like a glass plate and then I have a clear quartz like a big chunky clear quartz right there um, I set the intention with that crystal to bring forth positive energy into the room because this is my tarot room and you know that door leads into the hallway into my house so I pretty much put um, intentions that that crystal soaks up the negative energies and um, when I'm cleansing my room I make sure I cleanse that little crystal um, I've done crystals with like, I've done, um, I don't like to say spells, but I've done like intentions with crystals for, um, absorbing negative energies, um, or enhancing things. Um, I've totally done that, but wards actually, yeah, I've done it for this room in particular. Cause this is my reading room, you know, I don't want any other weird shit happening. And if I have guests over and if I don't really want them in my room, I will close the door. So it's like my little protection crystal. <laughs> okay. Am I even recording right now? Yes, I'm recording. Oh my God, you guys. I'm like going cuckoo right now. Starla. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going cuckoo. I, <laughs> I just spent like 10 minutes talking to my neighbor at the door and then like, which interrupted the reading I was doing for a client. And so now I'm like, I can't get back to that reading. Like I literally have to wipe that energy clean and start over. So sorry, you guys. Um, okay, I, I was gonna freak out right now if this wasn't recording. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, 
Have I experienced self-doubt as a tarot reader? Yes, I have. And I think everybody who is a tarot reader will experience self-doubt. Um, like I said, I was always afraid of being wrong. I was afraid of forgetting what the cards meant when I was pulling cards for clients. Um, I would for I would worry about you know not looking professional, or I would worry about them not being happy with their reading. That was another big one. Um, I still experience self doubt. You know, I feel like no matter how many years you have under your belt reading the cards, there will always be that doubt, and it's usually because you are reading for somebody who has very closed off energy, somebody who is a skeptic, um, or if you are reading for someone you are familiar with. Now, I know this is going to sound crazy, but reading for people that you know is way harder than reading for people you never met before. And if you don't believe me, try it. <laughs> um, I don't like reading for people I know so much, um, especially if I'm doing it face to face. I have to, I like to, to be in my own space and do readings per, to be comfortable. But um, because there's a sense of, it's, a, it's, a, it's like you, you, you're performing for them, you know? I get stage fright. Um, reading for my husband is a perfect example of that, you know, or certain friends that I have. It's like I really need to clear my head to do it um, because I'm so focused on worrying about them not being happy about their reading. <laughs> um, uh uh, get down. Move my candle. Don't want her to light herself on fire. Um, so, yeah, I definitely have experienced self doubt. It's just part of it's the name of the game. It's the name of the game, you guys. Um, but once you keep doing it enough, it does get easier. So it does get easier. <laughs> Best. Okay. So I put a little asterisk next to this question because I'm actually going to make a, a separate video on this topic. Cause I think this is a really cool one. What are my best ideas for starting to read tarot for others? So my tips when you are reading tarot for other people, like just a quick couple tips, um, is have a deck that you are 100% comfortable with. Do not read for a person face to face. If you are already nervous, do not pick a deck you have never used before in your life. You will only add to your anxiety over that, okay? So always have your go-to decks. Like for me, where are you, my guys, you guys? My go-to decks. I always have my Rider Waite with me. And it doesn't have to be a specific Rider Waite. It could be any Rider Waite. But if it's a Rider Waite deck, it's it's my go-to. Because that's the deck I learned with. So if I was reading for people in person, like in the tarot shops, I would always have Rider Waite with me. Because that was like the one deck that I felt super comfortable with. So always have your go-to decks. Okay? Um, when you're reading tarot for other people, do not, do not, do not worry so much about, now this is really like, it's almost impossible, but do not worry so much about being wrong. Okay. Worry about, worry more so of how you're going to verbalize what you're experiencing for this person versus being wrong. You know what I mean? Like when you're reading for intuition and you're reading for their energy, it's hard to be wrong about that stuff. Um, I can't explain it, but you'll you'll start to understand it the more you guys do that. Um, also pick visually like beautiful decks, you know, decks that are gonna attract their attention. Um, because there are some tarot decks out there that are a little bit more like study decks. They're not really the ones that you want to pull out for people because they're kind of blah looking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the Hermetic Tarot. Um, that one is like one of those that I would never read for other people with because I just feel like it's just, they're looking at it like, what's that? You know what I mean? Like you want a pretty deck that is just eye appealing. Um, or also use Oracle decks too blend oracle and tarot together when you're reading for other people to give yourself a break too because tarot can be rigid at times you know so there's nothing like pulling some oracle cards to kind of get that flow going and then start doing some tarot um what other tips I always have some crystals on the table and even give a crystal to your person that you're reading for 
I feel like when they have something in their hand, like when they have a crystal in their hand, they're gonna be so more, so much more relaxed. And one of the best tips that I ever received was um, from one of the owners of the stores that I read for. She told me Labradorite was really good to have someone hold if they are very nervous or, you know, anxiety or whatnot. So give them some Labradorite, you know, you guys can always cleanse your crystals later if you have some people touching them. Cause I know some of us are like a little weird about our, people touching our crystals. I'm not, I don't care, but give a crystal to the client that you're reading for and just to give them something to hold. You can also ask them to shuffle the cards, giving them something to do during the reading. And that's kind of why I also tell my clients take notes during the reading. So they're so focused on taking their notes and stuff. They're not focused on making eye contact with me because I notice when I'm, if there's too much eye contact going on and I'm noticing like if they make a weird face and maybe they don't know that they're making a weird face, then I start to think, oh my God, they don't like their reading. <laughs> so keep them busy and then you don't, you're not like making so much eye contact so that's a that's my tips for that. But I'm gonna do a whole video on that because I think that that's like, I really had to plan it out though. I need to like do a list and stuff, but I think that's gonna be a good video. So I definitely marked that one. Okay, how do I set boundaries when reading for myself? Um, so I don't have to consult my cards for everything. So this is like a question for people who may be addicted to reading tarot or having their tarot cards read, which reminds me of the book, The Psychic Junkie. It's all about that. Um, I don't have a problem with overdoing it with reading for myself. Um, I think I set my boundaries by, if I have a question to read, that if, if, okay, if there is something major that I need to be read for, I will spend the money and get a reading done from someone else. Um, that kind of helps me so that I'm not so much you know, pulling cards and just going all cuckoo crazy, Starla. Um, <laughs> she's, she is like, I keep thinking she's pooping, but she has gas right now. And I think it's because of the wet food I've been feeding her. Oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think, oh my God, Starla. Um, okay. So I think that be by when you're spending money and you're having a reading done you're going to be very particular with what question you're asking because you're spending the money on it right so i think that that's for me is like if i really need something major read for me i will spend the money and get it done okay um i like to pull cards for myself for daily readings like one card a day if that okay that's that's how i set my boundaries is like i usually pull cards if i need insight or I will do it on the new and the full moon. Those are really the top three times that I'm pulling cards for myself, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, this person, like, do they like me? Let me, let me pull some cards. Oh my gosh, what should I wear today? Let me pull some cards. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Um, also, I think by utilizing your support system. So if you have friends, which I hope we all do, we all have friends, um, ask your friends, talk to your friends, you know, like I have friends that I text, I have text friends. Okay. Cause a lot of my friends live long distance from me. So I have text friends and I have those friends that I'll send a text message to and you know, I'll maybe I'll, I'll vent to them or ask them a question and they'll give me some advice. That to me is an exchange. It's, it's different from getting a reading because I'm just getting advice from a friend. You know what I mean? So I would say know the difference between needing to invest in a, in a tarot reading for yourself versus something that you can just go ask your best friend or your husband or your significant other. <laughs> um, but that's how I would set boundaries. And then also like, you'll know if you're going overboard, okay? If you're pulling cards for the same question every single day, that's an, that is an issue, okay? Um, what makes a good deck for me to read with? I love this question. So I, I'm taking it as like, what would be my perfect deck? Okay. So this is my perfect deck. My perfect deck would be a tarot and an Oracle deck combined. Okay. So that's kind of the, one of the reasons why I really like the psychic tarot because it is a tarot and an Oracle deck combined. Um, but my perfect deck would be tarot and Oracle com combined. And then it would also have the chakra cards in it. 
Um, and then it would also have astrology in it and it would have a lot of moons and mermaids and crows and a little bit of everything in it, right? Um, and it would just be aesthetically pleasing and matte cardstock. <laughs> I just, I feel like a, a deck that is perfect for me has to be tarot, but it, it has to be, okay, it has to be tarot, but it can also be read with like an oracle deck. So it has maybe some phrases in it to, to spark your intuition. I also really like chakra cards in my deck. I love to read with energy. I love the chakras. I feel like that just helps enhance the reading. Um, and then I love astrology too. So I would like a deck to have some like astrology in it as well. So like a little bit of everything in this one deck. Um, the imagery could be Rider Waite because I love Rider Waite imagery, but I would like it to be some like funky coloring. Um, I'm really into muted tones, like muted colors or some just something different, funky, right? With some glitter. And <laughs> um, I don't know, just there's a lot of cool stuff out there, but that would be my perfect deck. So I don't have to pull like multiple cards, you know, which is fun. Like I like to pull multiple decks for readings. But if I could just have all that in one deck, I think that I would be set. And that would be the rose deck. And maybe I should just create it. I have a lot of people asking me like when I will create my own deck. And I'm telling you guys, like I really want to. I just don't know how to go about doing it. And I don't know if I have patience for it. But if I could do a rose deck, like that would be that would be it. Um, so yeah, I dropped my pen and I don't want to bend over and get it. So let's just use another pen. Okay. Next question. Um, my tips for new YouTubers posting spiritual content. So my spiritual channel, my spiritual channel, my YouTube channel is a blend of tarot and also spiritual. I wanted it to kind of be a little bit of everything. So tips for you, new YouTubers who are opening a spiritual content channel. Um, my tips would be make it pleasing to the eye, okay? Make sure, and, I, and I'm just using my phone. I have an iPhone. But I feel like the the video is clear, you know? I try to have decent lighting in the room so that you can see me. <laughs> um, and so I would say, you know, if you can afford cameras and whatnot and all the pretty lighting, then do it. But if you can't, your phone is just as fine. Just clean the lens. Like, I don't know how many times people will be filming with their phones and you can tell that 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 little lens thing is dirty because your fingerprints or your face or your makeup or whatever. I know I get makeup on my phone all the time. So clean the little holes, clean it before you even start filming. Like I make sure I do that with my YouTube videos and my client videos because sometimes it gets smudged with your fingerprints or whatever. So clean that, clean it both sides. <laughs> um, other tips have visuals so if you're talking about crystals don't just talk about the crystal have the crystal and hold it up so we can see it because i like to see what those crystals look like if you're talking about something in particular right if you're talking about a deck have the deck out so we could see it you know you don't have to go card by card but just so that we could see the deck um also do a blend of your face and then just like the table the, with what you're showing. So you guys will see in some of my videos, you don't even see my face. You'll just see my hands um, or whatever. But then I also like to put videos up where you get to see me too because I want you to remember I'm an actual person <laughs> and I do exist and I do have a face. Um, so don't be afraid to put your face in your videos, you know? Um, what else? If you want to get cute, you know, you can have some cute backdrop. I plan on putting a tapestry behind me. I just haven't bought it yet. I have one that I found that I want, but that's coming soon. Um, so, uh, you know, just like have a space for your videos that you can film in. Um, and pick topics that, okay, this is probably the best advice I'll ever give. Pick topics to talk about that you would want to watch. Okay, that's what I always tell people who ask me these kind of questions. If I would watch it, I'm going to film it. You know what I mean? So film stuff that you would watch because then you're going to be super pumped for it. You're here for it, you know? So if you would watch it, then obviously your audience, the people you attract, your tribe, um, your community, they're going to want to watch that stuff too, okay? They're following you for a reason. So that's a big one is like post stuff that you would watch. 
and try to not be so much of a guru okay there's a lot of those people out there and i feel like sometimes we can all tend to get into that guru mindset um you're not you don't always have to teach people stuff okay sometimes you can just do a video where you're just talking about whatever's going on in your day sometimes i like to do some of those and on here um, and then I'll, of course I'll have the videos where I am teaching something, but you don't always have to be a teacher or, a, you know, a, a, a one who knows all kind of a person. Um, sometimes you could just come on here and chat. You know, I've had so many people tell me that my videos make them feel like they're just sitting with me and we're just on a Saturday afternoon, just gossiping, you know, and that's that, that's like the kind of vibe that I wanted to have in my videos. People who watch me, I wanted them to feel that way because I want to be as casual as I can. I don't want to get all technical and, you know, professional. Like, I don't plan my, um, I don't, I do not plan my channel to be like thousands and millions of followers and subscribers. Like, I just don't. I kind of like it being quiet. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> make your channel for what it is, but always put content out that you would want to watch. Because if you're putting something out that you don't really care about, people are going to sense it and they're going to feel it. Um, and then keep your keep your channel, you know, open to anything. You don't have to just designate it as a tarot only channel or a or a meditation only channel. Like if you want to add other stuff, all you got to do is create a playlist for it. So I have tons of playlists on my channel. I have my soul to soul talks. I have my rambles. I have my haul videos. I have my deck reveals. Like. There's a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> so start getting comfortable with your playlists because you could create those and then you could kind of put your videos through there. So people who just are, are here for your channel specifically for your hauls, they'll find them all in your haul playlist, okay? Um, next question. What are my go-to YouTube YouTubers for meditations? I love this question. So. I have three YouTubers that I go to for meditations, and these are more so relaxing meditations, okay? Um, the first one, his name or his channel is called Meditation Vacation, okay? His voice is so soothing. It's so relaxing. I mean, you don't even have to be like getting ready to meditate. You just listen to his voice and he's just so relaxing. So Meditation Vacation is one I recommend. I like to sometimes just turn it on and have it as background noise when I'm like shuffling cards or if I'm just laying in bed. I'm telling you guys, it's so relaxing. I don't know how many times I've fallen asleep to his voice. <laughs> so he's one channel. And I'll list them in the description box for you guys. The next one is Gentle Whispering ASMR. Maria is freaking amazing. She's the first ASMRist that I've ever watched. Um, ASMR is that that whole feeling of getting tingles in your body and you're super relaxed based on someone's hand movements or the way they talk or noises or whatever that they're doing it's like a visual stimulation that you feel and it's like a physical like experience <laughs> and so my version of meditation is not always sitting in silence and connecting to my higher self Sometimes meditation for me is just watching an ASMR video or listening to an ASMR video so that I can relax, stop being anxiety prone, and then fall asleep. That's meditation for me too. And I've been doing a lot of that lately. Um, so gentle whispering is a big one. I love her videos. So check her out. And then the other one is Loon Innate. So Loon Innate is actually a reader and a, um, she's a Reiki a Reiki healer and all of that um, but her YouTube channel she does a lot of Reiki slash ASMR so you get like best of both worlds um, I probably listen to every single video she's ever posted and I have fallen asleep to her voice probably every single night <laughs> um, so it's like do I want a man voice tonight or do I want to listen to Lunate? Um <laughs> so I highly 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 recommend her channel if you're not always already watching um, and then I just, I put, I love chakra meditations. So on YouTube, just, just search, search on YouTube, chakra balancing or chakra cleansing or chakra meditation. And there's going to be a whole bunch of them that'll come up. 
So if I want to do a quick chakra balancing meditation, they have some that are like 15 minutes long, not, not that big of a deal. Um, also, I love sound healing meditations. That's a big one for me too. So I'll search on YouTube for sound healing meditation and there'll be some really cool ones that pop up. So those are my favorites to do with meditations and YouTube. Highly recommend it. Um, okay. My best intuitive tips. So, listening to your intuition, some tips. Trust the first thing that comes to mind, okay? So you're pulling cards, you're getting these visuals. Speak it out loud. Once you say it, you can't take it back. <laughs> so just start saying what you're receiving. Trust the first thing that comes to mind. Trust the first feelings that come to, come to mind. Um, your intuition, the more you trust it, the more it happens. Synchronicities take place, that's intuition too. Um, everything has a purpose. Now, I, I just totally just believe that. Um, if you really want to enhance your intuition, find a practice that, that you are interested in. So if you want to read cards, that's going to help you enhance your intuition. If you want to read runes, that will help. Tea readings, like the tea leaf readings, palm readings, astrology. Um, there's a lot of different tools out there. Reiki, you can learn Reiki. You can learn crystal healing. Um, to help you with that. Meditations help too, just to quiet your mind. Um, um, automatic writing helps too. Um, a lot of different practices and just constantly be involved spiritually. So I like to read spiritual related books, you know, the nonfiction stuff. I find that that helps me um, stay in the zone, you know, every once in a while you're going to need a break though, because you're going to go on like psychic overload, <laughs> which is fine. It happens. Um, but being, you know, just constantly eating, breathing, sleeping, intuition and psychic abilities and tarot and whatever else you're doing, it'll help you. Um, everybody is intuitive. It's just some of us are more trusting of our intuition than others. And those of us who trust it more, have it happen more often. Next question. How do I know when spirit is around and how have I experienced it? So like, what, is, what does it feel like for me? So um, on a physical sense, if spirit is around, I, and it's funny because I, as I say that, I'm getting chills. <laughs> I get chills. I get chills on my, on my arms, mainly my arms. If it's a specific guide, sometimes I'll only feel it on one side of my arm and it's usually my right. Um, but chills on my skin is a, is a sign for me that I'm connecting to something there. Like the energy shifts, so I get chills from it. Um, and the weather in here ain't changing. Like it's it's a bedroom. Like how, how cold and hot is it going to get aside from the air being on, but the air is on right now. So why am I getting chills? Because spirit heard. Ooh, she's connecting. <laughs> Um, so chills is a physical sense. Um, sometimes you can feel body changes. So if you're connecting with a spirit that passed away from a head trauma, you can get really bad headaches. Um, if you've passed away from a spirit who died from a heart attack, you might feel chest pain or like tightness in your chest. Um, just, just little things like that. Also, if you, depending on what Claire you associate with most. So for me, um, I'm more of a third eye Claire. I don't even know what these the words are. Claire, I'm, I'm Claire sentient for sure, which is empathic, which is I feel emotions and energy. Um, so like I said, I feel like the chills or I could just feel the difference in the room. It just feels different. Um, or I'll feel the energy of that spirit. So if they're very feminine, I'll feel a feminine energy. If they are masculine, I'll feel the masculine energy. Or I'll see it in my mind's eye. Um, so sometimes they'll give me like a visual and I'll see it in my mind's eye. I'm not physically seeing it. I don't have that ability. But I will visually see it in my, <laughs> in my third eye. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, what else? <sighs> um, it, it, to me, it's just mostly energy and feeling stuff. So it's my emotions. If I notice like my emotions are off, if I'm like super moody out of nowhere, chances are it's another spirit around or it's the person I'm hanging out with. <laughs> um, but to me, it's, it's a lot of like emotions and energy, sensing energy. 
Um, and then every once in a while, I'll get a visual. The visuals don't happen as often unless I'm pulling cards. That's That kind of helps me connect that way. But I'm not like physically seeing spirit around me. You know what I mean? I wish that would be kind of cool, but no. <laughs> every once in a while, though, I will see like, whoosh, whoosh, like lights. It, it looks like light, like uh, like a little orb fly by and I see that all the time in my bedroom. I told my husband that. I was like, I think our bedroom has spirit in it because I'm always seeing orbs, um, but not anywhere else. It's always our bedroom. Um, and then there's like a couple times where I'll wake up at night, like the last time when I saw a little boy hovering over me and my husband when I woke up. This was back at my mom's house. Um, it could have been in my mind's eye because I was still kind of like waking up from a dream state. Um, but I've never really seen physical form of spirit. Some people can. I just, I don't. That's not my strength. It probably can develop later on, but you know. Um, but how do I experience it then? How do I experience spirit? I used to be afraid of it, and I think that's why developing mediumship has been so slow for me. Um, I'm not afraid of it so much anymore. I just, I don't know if... Like, I, I know I want to do mediumship readings for people, but I feel like I just have so much self-doubt that I block myself. So it's a beautiful experience when it does happen. Um, I've had experiences where I helped um, people have a loved one crossover. Um, I've had an experience where, you know, I'm like randomly taking a shower and spirit pops in. <laughs> um, things like that. But... I feel like I doubt myself so much that um, I'm not ready to take that step into doing mediumship readings. So my connection with spirit is like through the cards. Like when I'm doing a, a client reading, you know, sometimes they come through. And last but not least, if I could only keep one deck and it's not any of my favorites. And, <laughs> and the person that asked this question was very specific. Rose, it cannot be your writer, any of your writer weights, your psychic tarot, or your bohemian gothic tarot. <laughs> so she already like was like, nope, it can't be any of those. So if you could only keep one deck, which one would I choose? And of course I had to pick two decks because I can't just pick one girl, okay? I can't do one. So I picked an oracle and I picked a tarot. And since you pretty much said I can't use any of my faves, um, I'm gonna use a runner-up fave. <laughs> so the, the tarot deck that I would choose is the Crow Tarot. This was gifted to me by um, one of my friends. And she gifted it to me because she was buying a copy for herself and then also because the Crow has totally become a new spirit animal for me and she thought it would be appropriate. So the Crow Tarot has quickly become one of my favorites. I'm actually totally into the idea of no humans in my tarot deck. I love that it's just crows. So if I had to pick only one tarot deck and they're all the rest of them were gonna burn down to the ground and I couldn't pick my Bohemian Gothics or my Psychic Tarot or my Rider Waits, <laughs> then the next one would be the Crow Tarot, without a doubt. I think this one's beautiful, okay? Um, and it's really easy to work with. It's it's like, it's so intuitive. I just, I love this deck. And then the Oracle deck that I chose because I had to, <laughs> can't just pick one, the Chakra Reading Cards. This deck has popped up so many times in my tarot reading videos that you guys will know exactly which which deck it is but I, I this was like a random impulse buy at Barnes and Noble one day I didn't even know this deck existed and the backs of the cards are like little rainbows it's the chakras and these are the cards so you guys have seen this deck everywhere it's very chakra related it's super intuitive I love this deck it I it just speaks to my soul when I read to it would read with it um so like I said I have to have a tarot deck with chakras like I just love the, the mixture of it and I believe the crow tarot has some um, astrology in it to be honest I feel like there's some astrology signs that pop up in the deck but I'm not sure um but yeah I have to have a chakra deck so I chose the chakra reading cards because this one just it speaks to my soul when I read with it it just everything flows 
So those are the two decks that I would choose. <laughs> now, as I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, all the other decks I have that I could have chosen, like, like why wouldn't I choose the Radiant, um, the, the Oracle of the Radiant Sun? Oh my God. Or I could have chosen the Magical Mermaids and Dolphins Oracle. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it's so hard. It's so hard to pick just one deck. So I hope I never have to do that unless it's like, I'm like, in my in my deathbed and I tell my husband to put the rider weight with me when I die <laughs> but anyways um thank you guys for watching thank you guys for submitting the questions for this Q&A um and I hope to have more videos coming up on my channel soon I'm I'm sorry you know it's like slow going with the video thing but the weekends are precious because the weekends I like to spend time with my hubs and then once he's gone you know then I come and do my videos and stuff so Thank you guys, I will talk to you soon. And if you have more questions for me to answer, you can leave comments below. I'll do my best to get through to them. And then maybe one of these days I will open up um, an opportunity to do another Q&A because these are fun, I like doing Q&As. So with that, love you guys, talk to you later.